What came first, the chicken or the egg? And can one exist without the other? As you listen to my musing of creation today, please enjoy the peaceful life my brood of chickens have here in Hawaii. I'll begin with a partial quote of Socrates that stated the following. We shall be better, braver, and more active men if we believe it right to look for what we don't know than if we believe there is no point in looking because what we don't know we can never discover. Obviously, this statement is supporting and valuing inquiry. Inquiry is associated with science and is the first step in scientific discovery. You ask a question. Follow it with research, form a hypothesis, conduct an experiment or perform an observation, and end with a conclusion. Yet I often wonder if we've lost the desire for a connection to spiritual inquiry and its necessity. Science is based on inquiry. Religion seems to be focused on belief in what was known in the past which totally goes against Socrates' whole point, to keep looking for what is unknown. And there is so much regarding a soul's creation that is unknown. Until recently, I hadn't noticed an abundance of inquiry into expanding our religious points of view via scientific discovery and inquiry. Maybe it was there all along, somewhere hidden in the internet, and I just didn't see it. But since actively searching for knowledge, I have realized many individuals or groups still take reference books, historical documents, and religious teachings or writings from long ago and continue to rely heavily on them for spiritual growth and knowledge, even though mankind has grown exponentially throughout the centuries, not just in our physical and mental abilities, also in technology, industry, and warfare. Stories of creation are common among oral stories, folk tales and myths, and historical documents. In the search, search to seek answers regarding creation and God, I look to my own experiences as both a mother, a vessel of souls and creator of life, and as a parent, a person who raises and nurtures a child, and my religious teachings of my life. In my thirst and quest, for knowledge of my spirituality, I found myself contemplating alternative spiritual beliefs based on motherly and parental knowledge and what I want for my own children. I looked to my biological parents and the characteristics they possessed. I turned to others and found different strengths and ideals. Then I imagined a parent who possesses the highest power, awareness, and enlightenment a divine creator, the ultimate muse, worthy to emulate. So for me, the creator represents the divine and possesses both the feminine and masculine energies. In my thoughts and prayers, though, I've always felt a predominantly masculine energy as God. That could be because of repetitive patterns of thought ingrained since birth or my intuition. With bo which both feel like the correct answer, as well as, this is what I feel for me, so it is. Yet whomever they are, I have specific beliefs regarding the divine creator and what we have been given, life in a physical form. Why would we have inspiration, desires, and the capabilities to become better selves if our creator didn't possess the same characteristics that we are so desperately working to attain? So I compiled a list of several divine characteristics that I believe are found in our Creator and in turn desired in ourselves to answer the questions, who is the Creator, what do they project on us, and what do they want for us? So I came up with a list of things. First, lives with unconditional love. Don't the best parents live with unconditional love? giving love even when they don't receive it back, no matter the circumstances. They will always have love for their children. So wouldn't our Creator feel and be the same? What about forgiveness? Forgiveness doesn't mean that parents support bad behavior or enable it. It means their children are forgiven for their mistakes and given chances to prove themselves multiple times. Again, another characteristic I believe 
or creator possesses. And what about desiring the best life for children, for a parent's child? I know I want my children to have the best life has to offer them. That includes a better life than I have. I don't have a feeling of ego with them. And I know they may or may not reach their full potential, yet I want it for them. I want them to be their best selves, intellectually, physically, and emotionally. And I want them to have a better life than I do. I would think that a divine creator would have these same beliefs when they created us. What about generosity? Offering guidance, assistance, and gifts. Good parents help their children sing the interests, strengths, and skills they possess at youth. We nurture them, allowing for self-exploration with continued support and assistance when needed or when possible. I believe we're lucky because the divine parent has given us unique gifts and abilities to start our physical life with, and it's up to us to discover them. We're created with a soul's purpose that is unique to us and only we can discover it in ourselves. It's a deeper purpose than any one gift your physical self possesses. Your soul's purpose represents the greatest purpose of your heavenly self. The divine creator wants us to discover our potential and not let limiting beliefs hold us back just like we desire in our own children. And as a parent, I feel that the best parents live without expectations. A wonderful parent has hope, believes in their children, and knows the possibilities that life can bring them, yet understands it comes from within each child because we are gifted with free will. The choice within ourselves to do as we please, even that when that means we go against our parent. Look to that unconditional love and forgiveness to see how a divine parent responds. But know that the gifts are given freely for us to discover what we're meant to be. What about a kind, compassion, and empathetic parent? One that understands is understanding of faults and accepting of them. A continued desire to see their children succeed, to be kind and gentle with them, to realize that each child has their own struggles beyond comparison of another, and in simple terms, to each his own. A wonderful parent possesses kindness, compassion, and empathy. Many of the teachings that I've read demonstrate the need to behave in the above manner, to be considered the best parents or the best people, the best souls. If we are children of God, wouldn't it be natural to believe our divine parent exhibits the same characteristics of an amazing parent? Since the majority of my religious experiences deal with Christianity, I embrace many of the stories told in the New Testament. I believe in Jesus and other divine individuals, though, from a variety of religious texts that were sent by God to show us what a divine child looks like, meaning to teach us how to live at our highest and show us what we're capable of when we embrace all that God is and the unique gifts we each possess. All that Jesus was, said, or did could never be captured in a document as small as the New Testament, so we have to believe that there was information left out, especially in women's roles, and that the stories of many religious texts were selected by a small collective of men to relay what they believed was the Word of God. Although I follow the teachings of Jesus, I also believe religion and belief in a creator has been interpreted in different ways throughout history due to cultural interpretations, time periods, and events that occurred around them. Are we all correct in our thinking? Yes. The Word of God can be interpreted in many ways, and our knowledge should increase as we erase our awareness, become enlightened, and acknowledge our divine gifts. At the beginning of my journey, I contemplated thoughts and other scenarios regarding our creation, where we came from, and why. My thoughts always led back to a single, all-knowing, all-encompassing creator, a God. So to answer the question, 
who is the creator and what does he project on us? What does he want for us? The correct answer I have is that the creator is what you feel deep within that they are. If you live in love, kindness, and generosity, then your creator must possess those same qualities. And I encourage you to inquire for yourself. Take to what you believe and live that. Yet keep questioning life in regards to yourself and events in history, our existence, our growth, and especially our mistakes. Look at different religions and what they say. Ask yourself, where did this idea and this way of thinking originate? When? What time period? Why? What was going on historically? And then what are its teachings? Find the commonality of religion and analyze those beliefs. Ask questions, research more information, form a hypothesis, observe life, and come up with your own conclusion. I did myself and found discrepancies within my personal religious ideas, ideals and prior understanding. I found that women, their thoughts, voices, experiences were often left out of historical documents, religious documents, documents primarily created by men, and in, ca- in many cases, a collective, of men, a collective of men with a specific purpose and message, a message they concluded themselves on their research, observations, and conclusions. My inquiry or learning something new opened me up to spirituality. When looking toward creation, I noticed how lacking a woman's voice has been. We've been underappreciated and undertold in stories and in historical documents. So it's time to create new ones, new patterns of thoughts, new beliefs, and new interpretations. Inquiry has played an enormous part in my transformation Yet there are still so many questions I have regarding creation and our coexistence on this planet. I have realized that one component of my soul's purpose deals with spiritual discovery, discovering more about creation, God, and all that I'm capable of. It's why I'm drawn to these topics, and I will live every day continuing to grow my soul self. When more of us ask new questions regarding spirituality, The collective can then research, hypothesize, experiment, or observe, and form new conclusions. Only then will we gain a greater understanding of a creator, a God. So, to answer my original question, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I say the chickens, hen and rooster. They were given life and divinely created to procreate and in turn produce the egg together. As I end my musings today, I want you to, I want to remind you to be mindful in your intentions. Be kind and loving and generous in your thoughts, your words, your actions, and your deeds. Because when you live with love and kindness and generosity, those same energies return to you in abundance. I hope that today finds you well, living at bliss, completely happy and healthy. Until the next video, aloha again, beautiful souls.